Hi, this is Travis Campbell from Add-On Products, and today we're talking about digital signage hardware. In front of me, I have a brand new DS1050, which we're going to look at, which is a digital signage hardware that connects to Digital Sign Service, which is our exchange integrated meeting room booking system. So I'm just gonna open this up, take a look at what's inside. First, we have the sign itself the display, got some packaging, some different guides. This first guide is about the hardware. We've got some different mounting instructions on how we can hang that up. Save that for later. The second guide is the getting started guide for digital sign service. Now these units come pre-installed with the digital sign service app and we're actually going to run through the steps for getting that up and running. Uh, after we unpack this box. So I'll save that as well. Surface preparation tips if you're gonna tape this on a glass wall. Set that over here. And then we have some of the mounting devices. So here we have the mounting for a more traditional wall mounting. little plasticky piece to cover up on sightly cables and whatnot. Small bag of screws and some tape for uh, taping this up on glass walls. And then finally, we've got our power supply. And this power supply comes with US plugs. UK plug and standard European plug. We're filming this in Denmark, so we're going to use the European plug today. So here again is the sign. And when we remove it from the bag, see what it looks like. We've got some display lights here, one on the front and one on either side. We can just power this, uh, power this thing up and get going. So when this starts powering up, it's going to have a yellow display light and you're going to see a bar here that's moving. This is uh, the Android operating system getting started. And the first time you start this up, this could take, uh, take a little while to get to the start menu. While we're waiting for this to start up, we could take a look at the backside. Today, when we're doing this, we're going to be connecting with uh, Wi-Fi. You can see here we have a Ethernet jack, and this also takes power over Ethernet. So you can power and do your network all through Ethernet. You also have some small uh, USB connectors, uh, as well as a micro SDHC and an audio connection. All right. So we are now in the configuration screen of the hardware. And at this point, we can get out our getting started guide. And the first thing we've already done, we've plugged in the power and uh, ethernet cable. If you're not using Wi-Fi, we're gonna use Wi-Fi to configure this device. And now that we've powered it up, we get to the screen where we can tap the Wi-Fi um, Ethernet settings as well as setting up our uh, date and time settings down here. So we'll start with the uh, Wi-Fi settings. You can see here that actually we have uh, run through, we've waited long enough so that the digital sign service application has run its out autoplay. So you can always just go back by pushing the back button if you've uh, waited too long. We're just going to cancel this autoplay for the moment. So Wi-Fi is right here. If we click on Wi-Fi, we need to first turn it on. It's going to search for the local Wi-Fi networks. Choose the network you want to use. Put in your password. And connect. So good, we're connected. 
Now we can come out here and the next step in our quick start guide was to uh, set our date and time settings. So it's important that your date and time setting of the actual device is set up to your local time. And as I said, we're in Denmark, so we're going to select that from here. Just scroll down to the proper time zone, which is GMT plus one. You can use 24 hour time format if you want to or not. And now we can press the home button again to come back here. So now, according to our quick guide, we're ready to start up the application. And you can either do that by letting the autoplay run through, or you can just say cancel and play. Now these devices come with digital sign service preloaded, and they're pre-configured to set up with our, uh, with our server, with our add-on product server, so that you can run a test without installing any server software on your own. And we're going to do that as an example here. So when we press setup, we can see that the server address is already filled out. That's our demo, uh, demo server. And if you're using our demo server, regardless of your local time zone, you want to keep the server time zone at GMT plus one, which is also its preset. Then you can see here under the rooms that we've got a number of different rooms that we can use as an example. And there's, there's other people that are using the same the same server, so there might be some demo uh, appointments already made. But you just choose the room you want to. We can say we want to have this Copenhagen room. And here we've got some uh, server background and logo options so that you can change this to fit your branding. Uh, we've got some timeout and update options. We've got your language. Kiosk mode, this is important that you turn this on. And this is basically removing this uh, Android bar so that people are unable to navigate outside of the digital sign service application. So that's the basic stuff that we're going to worry about right now. So we can just say OK. And here we are. This is what it looks like. This is a room sign for the Copenhagen room 13. It has our own logo. Again, that's a pre-configured uh, feature. So you can, of course, remove the add-on products logo and put your own in. We can see it's available. It's glowing green on all sides. And if we want to book this room, it's a simple process of tapping. And here we have an instant meeting where we can select a subject from the predefined subjects that the, the server has been configured to. So we can say it's a project meeting. And then we have the end time because this is always going to be an instant meeting from right now. So we'll say that this is a short meeting that we want to book until 1130. And this is going to book the room. And now we're seeing a feature that is uh, requiring me to confirm the meeting. This is to combat for uh, meetings that are booked, but nobody shows up to, so-called ghost meetings. So here, it's forcing me within 15 minutes from the start of the meeting to confirm it. Otherwise, this meeting will be ended and free up the space for someone else to use. So we'll just confirm it. And that's it. We're up and running with uh, the Copenhagen room 13, we can see that it's just been booked uh, and we can hang this up on the wall and get going. If you have any questions, please contact us at ad-on.com or you can also leave a comment in the comments field below this video. Thanks.